Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Before we, uh, I take questions and we talk about our teams and performance and what have you, just a, c a couple things I wanted to share is our academic success. And I think sometimes in this world, it's easily forgotten what we're here to do. And we're here to develop young people and we're here for them to get a degree and an education, to grow as a person and to have success after Syracuse. Our spring 2023 average GPA was a 3.2 for all of our student athletes, 65% above a 3.0 and 47% a 3.5 or better. We are tied for the fifth highest graduation success rate among Power Five schools. We had three student athletes, Chelsea Doman, Louisa Gathman, and Noah Singleman, win postgraduate ACC scholarship awards. And Michaela Walsh, a member of our women's soccer team, was one of 12 seniors named as University Scholar, and that's the highest undergraduate honor the university bestows on a student. So I'm really proud of our student athletes, our young men and young women, and their academic success. Um, when you came in today, second thing is, uh, is phase 1B of the John A. Lally Athletics Complex, as you can see from outside, is officially underway. Thankful to John and Laura for their transformative gift and their leadership. I'm thankful to the Chancellor and our Board of Trustees for their support. I think what we're doing with Phase 1B and one of the primary components, obviously, is a new football operations center. I think it makes a statement. It makes a statement to our current team, makes a statement to our recruits, makes a statement to our staff, to our fans, and everyone who works in the football area. When you combine a new football operations center with the JMA Wireless Dome, the improvements that we've made there, more to come in the future. And the Ensley Indoor Athletic Facility you know, gives us a comprehensive package of facilities I think is quite competitive, so we're thrilled about that. And then the last 13 of our teams qualified for postseason play this year. Um, very, very proud of their competitive success, obviously highlighted by men's soccer winning the national championship. And our women's lacrosse team had a tremendous year um, and lost a heartbreaker to BC in the Final Four. So with that, I'm happy to take questions. Who would like to start today? Oh, go ahead, Donna, thank you. Of course. Uh, Donna, I wanted to ask you about NIL and the, the New York, the bill that the governor may or may not be signing relative to students to, to get uh, a different, to get New York State in a different position in terms of NIL. What will that do for Syracuse University if that bill is signed? Well, Donna, I think you go back, we've been supportive of NIL since day one, and it's almost two years to the date, because it was July 1, 2021, when it went in, into effect. We said that publicly. We've worked with our student athletes. We've worked with their families to give them education, um, financial literacy training, um, advice where we're able to. So I think anything that advances opportunities for our student athletes to participate in NIL, uh, we're supportive of. Well, we still, we still have to see what happens with the legislation, right? So I don't want to be too premature with my answer. Okay. Um, John, in regards to uh, your motivations, what's the next process and what will you do this, next, this summer? Like well, I think you know, the next, the, what we'll see this fall and we're on schedule for is, is for the 5G, which is a huge part of the component, which is going to really, really significantly enhance the fan experience. Um, and we will be, you know, kind of the densest stadium college facility in the country in terms of, you know, w wireless technology and 5G. So that's really going to enhance the fan experience. And then what we have planned for 2024 is, is a, uh, to have it done by football is a full reseat uh, of the dome and the construction of uh, Myron Victory Court. The other thing that, we, uh, that we're planning to have online for football, the start of football this year, is uh, the Kuhn Game Day Lounge presented by Hidden Level. So that will be kind of a high-end, you know, VIP sports club type area, um, which I think will be very attractive to our suite holders, obviously our courtside uh, ticket holders, season ticket holders for men's basketball, women's basketball as well. So 
it just continues, you know, Alex, and it goes back to when I mentioned the dome enhancements, what we're doing with Phase 1B of Lally, the Ensley Indoor Practice Facility. Again, I think we've got a comprehensive offering of facilities, which is uh, quite competitive. Chris? Uh, John, you mentioned how supportive um, the school has been um, of having a lot of facilities. Um, what did you make of Jesse Edwards saying that he didn't feel like the school was that important? Well, listen, I wish Jesse, Jesse nothing but the best. And Jesse and I, we, I, I really enjoyed the time he was here. We developed a really good relationship with one another. Um, there were efforts, and, and we made significant progress um, in terms of NIL opportunities for Jesse, a little more complicated because international student athletes. Um, but at the end of the day, he had a decision to make, and he chose West Virginia, and I respect that. And I wish him nothing but, but success. He's a really, really good young man. So obviously, it's not a perception you want athletes to have. Um, is there anything that you guys have changed or adjusted since then to make sure it doesn't happen again? No, and I think you're going to see, you know, you're going to see more transient nature, right, of student athletes, Chris. You're going to see more in the portal, right? This is not, this is only, the Jesse Edwards, this is not unique to Syracuse. This is going on all across the country, right? You know, look at the Georgia defensive lineman that transferred to USC, right? Look at other things that are going on. So this is the world that we're in right now. It's the NIL world. It's the transfer portal, right? The transfer portal really kind of is free agency in a sense. And, you know, we're going to have kids who go in the portal and leave, and we're also going to get athletes who come to Syracuse from the portal. And I think we've done pretty well with that with football. Uh, this year, and I think obviously with men's basketball uh, as well, where the portal, the portal will help us, and we have to use it as an asset. But again, I think you're going to see more, you know, roster roster turnover. I think is is something that you'll see more and more of across the country. Right. John uh, on the NIL and NIL front, pardon me. I was just kind of wondering what are the lessons of Adam Weissman, celebrity sports side his eventual breakup and, and kind of how that relationship existed with the university now and along. Well, we've had, you know, Brent, we've had a number of, of people step up uh, in significant ways to, to support our NIL efforts. Um, they've done so quietly. Um, you know, we were thankful for Adam for his support. Um, but we've had others, people who have stepped up and, you know, I think we're in, we're in a better place today with NIL than we were 90 days ago. Does that approach work quietly? Just kind of high profile. I think it's yeah, I think it's it's up to the individual in a sense, right? Jesse? Uh, John, uh, how have you seen Jim Bayheim kind of transition into the new role in that in this athletics department as he embarks in this next part of his athletics career? Well, I'm ex I'm excited and, and it's really important uh, to all of us that Coach Bayheim continues to be part of Syracuse Athletics and Syracuse University. And he will help us um, raise money, and we need to do more of that. Um, he will help in that regard. You know, he's also, he's, he's, he's there and he's available to any coach, head coach, assistant coach, you know, guidance, mentorship, et cetera, that type of thing. When we have recruits on campus, you know, they can meet with coach as well. Um, he's offered to, uh, to speak um, you know, to students in Falk, Newhouse, et cetera, that type of thing. Really important to have Jim Beheim part of the Syracuse Athletics family. And he's embraced this role. He's, he's enthused about it. Um, and I kid him, I said, we're going to put you to work. Emily? John, so with Navy football, you know, led this team to a bowl game last season, which I know is a big goal for you guys, and then also top 25 for a handful of weeks. But I'm curious, looking at this next season, what does he need to do to maybe guarantee or look towards a contract extension? Because at least publicly, there's not been an announcement of that since 2018. Well, there's multiple years left on his contract, okay? So, you know, let me, let me state that clearly. You know, second, Emily, what we want to do is, you know, we had success last year, you want to build off of it. You know, you, you, want, to get, you want to get better. That's the goal of every single person, you know, who works in the football operation is, is, is we want to get better. Um, I think we've had a really, really good off season. Um, the coaches, the assistant coaches he's brought in um, are, are very, very good. 
um, have, have contributed instantly. Um, I think we're recruiting. We're having success on the recruiting trail. I can't mention anything specifically, but we're having recruiting success. Again, when you see what's going on outside, you know, I think there's momentum around the program. So we want to build on that momentum, and I think we can. What's like the, the tangible there of showing that this program is better? Like, is there like a win total you're hoping? It's not a win total. You know, you want to you know you want to be good enough where you make where you're playing that 13th game, you know, and then if you're really really good, maybe you get to play more than 13. Mm -hmm. It's going to reward uh, high achieving programs. How can programs compete against other conference schools when their when other conference schools are getting you know, upwards of like you know, ten million dollars a year more just because of their their success that they're already at? Oh, Mike, that's you know the that's still to be discussed and determined, right? If there is some type of you know incentive-based revenue share, um, Jim Phillips and his staff they're working every single day to identify incremental opportunities for the conference and for all 15 members of the conference. We're working every day here to where we can grow our top line number, we can grow our revenue number as well. You know, I think you know candidly at times you know you, you've, you, it's it's what you do, it's how you spend, how you invest your money. And you, you know, you've got to be a little, maybe a little bit smarter and a little bit uh, more creative, a little bit more entrepreneurial than, than you know, some, of, some of your peers, per se. But in some ways, it's not, you know, you look at Clemson, right? Okay, they've got an 80,000-seat football stadium, right? You look at us, we've got a 34,000-seat basketball stadium, you know, basketball arena, right? So there's already differences in there in terms of revenue that's being generated. Um, so, again, I think the conference is well positioned. ACC's won nine national championships this year. Wake Forest going for the 10th in the College World Series. Um, so I'm, ex I'm, I'm excited and I, and I look forward to, to the future of the ACC because I think this conference competitively and academically is as good as there is in the country. The Big 12 previously had a sort of a similar plan where they also rewarded Schools based on on-field success obviously didn't work. Texas, Oklahoma, even Nebraska already left you know, years ago. Is there what's the reason why this plan with the ACC, if it goes through, will be different in terms of seeding and conference? Well, I think again, I think how it's structured will be different because the, the big the Big Twelves was different even from their base media rights, is my knowledge and my understanding. So it's kind of an apples to oranges comparison with to what the Big Twelve did. Not, not until it's finalized, Mike. Again, I don't want to be premature. You're there. You said the work of, uh, is connected to the uh, ongoing construction for the Rally of Learning Complex. What is the timeline on that? And where, where do we stand with this? Uh, what is the uh, kind of timeline from here going on with the complex? This will be, this will be about a two-year project. So football will, will be back. <coughs> Phase 1B will be completed by summer of 2025. And not only is it a new football operations center, but it's a one-team Olympic sports center. So it's going, to be, it's going to be a really significant upgrade for our Olympic sports as well. Uh, we're going to have a lounge for our Olympic teams. We're going to have a new cafeteria, full-service cafeteria that could serve all our teams. Um, enhanced uh, sports medicine uh, training room for Olympic sports and football as well. So it's, it's, it's comprehensive. But football is, you know, they're, I, I, met, I had my meeting with Dino today, and they're all boxed up. So they're, mo they're moving on Friday. And if you looked outside his office and saw what's going on, you know, they better be out of there by Friday. No, no, we didn't. And, uh, you know, Adam and I, we always, we've always gotten along well. He's, he's been cordial to me, and I've been cordial to him. Again, thankful for his support um, and thankful for, for people who have who've stepped up, thankful to all our donors. Do you, do you view him as like a major loss from that space? Like, you, you know, continuing to not? 
again, I think we've had people step up quietly, Chris, in very significant ways to, uh, in terms of NIL and also what we're doing with the Lally Athletics Complex as well. I think the, the roster construction, um, you know, Coach Autry and his staff, they've done a terrific job. Um, and that, you know, obviously there's a number, a number one priority. And again, our recruiting is going well. Can't comment, comment anyone specifically, but our recruiting is going well. So I think three, month, you know, three months into this, Adrian's off to, to a really, really good start. Um, but we haven't, played a, we haven't played one second yet. A basketball. You look at our non-conference schedule. Um, it's pretty daunting when you look at the field in Maui, uh, SEC, ACC challenge, Georgetown, um, and then 20 games in the ACC. So it's going to be, it's going to be a very rigorous uh, season for us. But very pleased with what Adrian and the staff has done to date. Mm -hmm. John, I know this is going to be 10 years. I think we're a very respect, well-respected member of the, of the ACC. Um, you know, amongst the, the CEOs, Chancellor Severud is, is admired and respected greatly uh, by all his peers. I have a really good relationship uh, with, with the ADs. I think you look at our brand, I mean, Syracuse is a national brand. You can argue it's a global brand. Um, you look at what we do in terms of the ACC network um, and delivering the, the New York market, New York State, that's very important to the economics of the ACC network. So I think we're, you know, we're, we are respected. Um, we're thrilled to be in the ACC. Again, I think it's, as I said earlier, I think competitively and academically, I think it's the best combination. I think the ACC does it better than anybody else. Jim uh, announced his departure now at the ACC tournament in Greensboro this year. That's when he found out you know, his career was coming to an end. I was wondering, though, in your mind, when did you decide, knowing that at some point Jim was going to retire, that Adrian was going to be his successor? Mike, it's, it's something you're always, I think any AD in the country, you're always kind of doing scenario planning, right, for coaches. So, you know, I've, I've gotten to know Adrian well since I've been here. Um, you know, talking to people in the ba college basketball world, beyond the college basketball world, highly, highly respected. Um, so there, there wasn't, you know, a, a specific date per se, but um, again, I, I, I'm pleased with, with, with the transition, with the succession, what Adrian's done to date, and thrilled in, in nobody wants Adrian to succeed more than Coach Behan. So a year ago, two years ago? <laughs> well, sometime, you know. <laughs> two months ago? No, it was, yeah, it was, well, he's been in the job for three months, so it better be more than two months ago, Mike. I'll, gi I'll give you that. Hey, John, do you wish there were a little more restrictions or more rules about NIL than there is right now? Well, I, I what I'd like to s Personally, what I'd like to see, Donna, is I would like to see disclosure on a national basis in terms of you know, what, what, what are the, you know, what is put the national database, every NIL deal is entered. The one thing that we do know in NIL is, you know, there's a lot of mythology. I'll kind of leave it at that that goes on. So I think it'd be really good to have more clarity um, in, in, in definition, but, you know, that's, you know, if and when that happens, you know, we don't know. So you've got to live with where we are in the moment. And again, we've been supportive. We're going to be supportive. We've had businesses step up. I'd like to see more local businesses step up and work with our athletes. Those who have, the feedback has been incredible. They, lo you know, they love working with our athletes. Um, so I think that's, you know, that's a key component for us as well, is I'd like to see more, more businesses in the community and the region um, engage and work with our students with NIL opportunities. It, when you say clarity, are you, are you suggesting that some of these deals that we hear about out there aren't exactly? 
Mike, I think you know the answer to that. <laughs> Yeah, Chris, I haven't thought about that. Good question. Don't know. Um, one of the other sort of trends that people talk about is the possibility of revenue sharing and employee status for, for athletes. Um, what are your thoughts, pro or con, on that in the future? Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I think Charlie Baker said it pretty well, right, in, you know, in terms of the employee-employer relationship. You know, that that's... That's not, we don't think that's the right path. I agree with President Baker on that. You know, in terms of revenue share, you've got to remember, you know, we have a top line revenue. We also have expenses. And the investments that we make to fund our Olympic sports, you know, is primarily driven through football and men's basketball, right? And if you get into revenue share, where is, where is that money coming from and at what expense? And I think one of the things that's been widely underreported is if you look at the U.S. Olympic movement, the farm system, by far the development system for the U.S. Olympic movement is collegiate sports. So if you get into a revenue share, you get into employee, employer, that type of thing, right, what's the impact going to be on Olympic sports? Because it could be dramatic. I, I don't I don't know. Don't know. Well then Emily then wrap it up with him. Just looping him back to Dino for a second. You said multiple years. Is that two? Is that four? I know twenty twenty four is kind of the year that it's mul 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 multiple multiple years and you know what? We have success in twenty twenty three and beyond, you know. I hope Coach Babers is here for a long time. He wants to be here, we want him to be here. We're gonna do everything we can to support him. John, just wanted to get kind of a lacrosse state of the union on the record, just how you saw both programs. Yeah. All right, I'll start with the men's program. I, th I, think, I think growth, Brent, would be the word that I would use. Um, incredibly young, really, really young, but very talented. Um, and there's a lot of pieces that come back. Um, I think Gary and his staff have used the portal extremely well. Um, so I think we're poised. And uh, you know, next year, you know, we want to be back. We expect to be back in the tournament. And I think we'll have a team that's, that's capable of that. You know, women's lacrosse, it was, it was a, a tremendous year. You know, only team that beat Northwestern. I think it was 10 t ranked teams that we beat. Um, obviously, you know, disappointing end of the season but a very successful season. John, thank you very much for your time, and thanks, everybody, for coming out today. Okay, thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.